Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone. So today we are very delighted to have two panelists joining us in this forum entitled From Research to Business as part of Faculty of Science Research Week. Uh, Faculty of Science Research Week has been held since 14th March last week with so many exciting activities. So before I introduce both of these panels, I would like to inform that this forum can be viewed through FB Live Faculty of Science as well as Cisco Webex channel. Participants and viewers are welcome to ask any questions at any time regarding perhaps commercialization, starting up your business, uh, and, many, uh, and perhaps motivation from our panels. So you can simply type your questions at uh, the Facebook comment section chat section in the Cisco Webex, or participants in the Cisco Webex can unmute yourself to pop the questions. So my name is Fairuz Janak Ismail and I'm the moderator for this forum. Okay, so to many people, the career path of a researcher and scientist can, and an entrepreneur can seem very different. So, but in fact, we knew that many scientists have become many successful entrepreneurs. So in this forum, we hope that we can answer some common questions, such as the strength of a scientist that can make them good entrepreneurs, uh, challenges that are unique to scientists turned entrepreneurs, habits that are important for being a successful uh, scientist entrepreneur. So first thing first, let me introduce our panels for today. So we have here Dr. Afnizan Faisal bin Abdullah. So he is the Chief Executive Officer and the co-founder of Synapse Innovation Stadium Berhad. It's a Malaysia leading company that provides artificial intelligence, big data analytics, uh, and cloud computing solutions for the manufacturing, healthcare, and agriculture sectors. So he is frequently invited by universities, multinational industries, and government agencies to share his innovative thoughts, uh, technical experience, and vast knowledge in the fourth industrial revolution technologies for solving challenges within the organization. So he said he said that he loves spending his time with his family, exploring the latest technologies and just collecting and reading books in various topics of business and visionary leadership. So uh, while, while uh, running his business and juggling his passion as a technology leader in both the academia and the industrial world, he found that delivering the best services requires a deep understanding of the technologies and building up a strong team with talented young professionals. And he believes that developing talents with adequate skills and technical know-how is always the key to uplifting the national economy. So let me introduce the second panel for today. So we have here uh, Dr. Diana Farziha Binti Ali. So TS Dr. Diana Farziha Binti Ali is a deputy director of development at UKM Alumni Unit and senior lecturer at the School of Education Faculty of Social Science and Humanities, UTM. She is also a Chief uh, Executive Director at DF and K Group Syndrome Bahad, a UTM speed of company. She is not only an expert in teaching and conducting research, she also has experiences in collaborating with industries and government agencies since 2016 through consultation, research and commercialization. So from, 12, to, from 2018 until 2020, she had generated almost 1 million through more than 12 projects with industries collaboration partners in Malaysia. One of her projects, the multi-sensory smart room, MSSR, had received various parties' recognition. Through that project, she had won several awards, such as Social Entrepreneurship Awards at Malaysian Commercialization Year 2019 by MESTEC and three awards at Scheme Pemulaan Usahawan Bumi Putra, superb by Teraju where she had received 500,000 ringgit for the Super Commercialization Grant Award. So other than that, she also won a Gold Award and Special Award Community at Innotex 2019. So apart from her research activities, she also is active in conducting workshops and training for autism education and collaborates with organizations such as in the Brain Occupational Therapy Center, Jabatan Perpaduan dan Integrasi Nasional Negeri Jebo dan Melaka, Genius Kurnia, National Child Development Research Center, Little Khalif and Program Pemulihan Dalam Community, which is PDK in Johor. And starting this year, uh, she had started an initiative to help the special needs community among the B40 families to get therapy opportunities through sponsorship program. Okay, 
So that is the uh, some introduction of our, from our panels. So perhaps we can start up with some motivation from the panels itself. So maybe I can start from uh, by Dr. Af. Is it okay to call you Dr. Af? Yeah, sure, sure, okay, sure, all right. <laughs> so uh, so the, the first question: When you start thinking about commercialization your research, and perhaps why? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for Faculty of Science for these invitations and for our great uh, chair person here, uh, Dr. Fairuz. We have a very great uh, generous introduction for both of us. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, uh, answering the 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 query about uh, what's the thing that um, when we start uh, thinking about commercializing, isn't it? Okay. So. Um, uh, it has started when um, uh, we are having troubles and uh, difficulties to get grants, research grants whatsoever, uh, whereas uh, the challenge, the competition is very high during that times, and uh, less of us uh, have uh, been awarded by such a public grant. So from there, uh, we are struggling a lot on uh, surviving ourselves in the academic world. And uh, Alhamdulillah, during that times, I've been uh, uh, received the opportunity with uh, our first client, which is the Petronas, during that time, uh, that uh, having a trouble, having a problems in um, uh, detecting or identifying uh, failures in their in their in their operations, and from there, I realized that um, uh, not only the the challenge that we have on the, getting the grant, but also on getting the talent itself. We are really good in developing talents, but after a few years, they go out, they, they go, they go uh, leave, leave us and they go to uh, other industries like to serve in. Uh, but it's not things that we can, we, we can say that uh, we, need, we need to, uh, we need to find, we need to see it as, a, as our challenge. But uh, the thing is how we want to adapt with that situation. So in my case, that's the way I think about um, starting the business where I can retain the talents at the same time I'm looking forward on sustaining the research through commercialization in other words we try to penetrate the, the markets with our technology and from there we can return back to the university in the form of um, research funding thank you thank you Dr. Oh. so what about you Dr. Diana so what 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 makes you start this commercialization Okay, thank you, Dr. Fairuz. And first of all, thank you for Faculty of Science for inviting me and Dr. Alf to uh, to become the panel on this forum at Faculty of Science Arts Research Week. So, what motivated me or trigger me to commercialize my project? Uh, as mentioned by Dr. Diana, uh, I started when we was invited by the industry to develop and design a room for special needs children. As I mentioned before, I'm not a special in or expert in special needs education. But um, my, uh, my focus is more ataupun my, my expertise in building construction. So I have a knowledge in drawing and designing. That's why the industry invited me to design and develop uh, for special children. However, during the journey to develop the research, I have no idea about the special needs committee. That is why I need to do a lot of research, to study the criteria, to, to understand uh, this committee, to make sure that the research I develop successfully to benefit and effective to them. So starting from there, uh, it triggered me that uh, after I success uh, developed the, uh, the room uh, and then after several uh, program that I've been a volunteer for this program, uh, I fall in love uh, to this community. Okay, so that I think that's this that my human responsibility as a human a little bit on my expertise that I can share to the community. That was I started to commercialize this product, and Alhamdulillah, Allah is my journey because uh, when I uh, plan to commercialize this product, I have no fine at all. So I try to uh, apply the super grant, and Alhamdulillah, we won the grant. And with the 500k, we start to establish my care center, which is provide services for the special needs children. That's, that's very great, very motivation for us. So, uh, Dr. Ah, um, other than at that time you mentioned that when you wanted to start your research is because at that time you were lacking of public grants. So, is there any, is there any other factors? What or who motivated uh, you to have the company? Okay, thank you for the questions. It's quite personal, personalized for that. Okay, so but I really, really love to share it today, lah. Okay, the only, uh, I guess, uh, the the main reason why I do business is uh, due to uh, because of my wife. I shall meet you so out there. 
So uh, uh, she's a big, she's a big, uh, very very supportive to me. Whatever I do, she support. So uh, and, uh, during that times, um, uh, when I came back to to my to my home and then uh, talking to her about the difficulty that we do, and then she motivate me a lot of uh, something that I can venture into. And uh, they keep supporting by uh, managing the family on behalf of me as part of the family. So for me, uh, my wife is my my largest motivation and why we uh, why we start venturing into that. Besides that, I also watch and read a lot of uh, many many uh, successful figures. For example, um, Steve Jobs and also uh, recently Elon Musk and whatsoever. And uh, this is kind of additional uh, motivation for me to keep forward. Uh, because sometimes we find the hurdles, the challenges in uh, along the way, and uh, when I read it, and I guess uh, it gives me a lot of motivation to move forward. Thank you, thank you very much. So behind the successful man, there's so always so <laughs> I can't agree more. <laughs> okay, so Dr. Diana, so you, is there any? So we heard all these beautiful stories. Yes. So apart from that, so any demotivating incidents? Uh, before or while running this commercialization. So how did you manage that? Okay, contrary to the the, the uh, what's motivated him uh, to commercial the product. So what de demotivating me, eh? of course. Okay. <laughs> so um, uh, as of course, there are ups and downs in the academic world and business world. So both uh, world is same, but different challenge and different uh, factor that motivate me. And based on my experience, there are lots of things that have uh, experienced throughout my journey um, one of them is people that we uh, deal with because we know that people come in different colors so be oppressed uh, like to or even uh, discriminated uh, this is a thing that I have been faced lah, in throughout my special journey. needs yes yes sure. and one more thing is when people ask about your credibility that one is one sometimes if I feel so hurt because many people Diana, uh, you are not from special needs education. How come you can involve in this field? How come you can become entrepreneur uh, in this field? So sometimes I ask myself, am I uh, in a wrong way, in a, a wrong path? But uh, you should give up uh, because uh, we know that uh, as long as you do something good, uh, maintain your integrity and Allah will know better stuff for you. And one more thing, because we are still new, as I mentioned before, we established the company uh, 2020, uh, early February, and we know that because of the pandemic COVID-19, yeah. we need to stop operation uh, mid-March until end of June, even we are not fully operate yet. yet. So, uh, because we are still new, uh, it can any attack for me, because I don't know how to do, um, uh, how to face, uh, because we still need to uh, yeah, cover yeah. the operation, whatever, so ever. So this become the real challenge for you to become an entrepreneur. So Alhamdulillah, until today, we, uh, we managed to sustain and overcome the problem. And this teach me how to manage your people, your community, so on, yes. Thank you so much. So uh, let's move to the next uh, topic. So it's about tips and strategy. So I'll start with Dr. Af. Is that okay? Okay, so how to start commercialization, commercializing your research? Do you have mentor or do you have, when you start your research, yeah. do you have mentor or do you just simply, do you just simply start your, your, your research? Okay, right. yeah. uh, to answer that question, so thank you Dr. Uh, Dr. Fagus on that question. Uh, mentors, okay, just to let you guys know that I have more than 20 mentors outside there. Uh, only five from UTMs and the rest is from outside from uh, KL and uh, other industries, for example. So, um, yeah, uh, I learned a lot from my mentors. Uh, and uh, mentor me doesn't mean that we have a formal meeting whatsoever. Mentor is like friends, basically. Uh, it's not something that your boss asks you to uh, find a mentor and you can, uh, and you need to report to the to, to us uh, who's your mentor as what you do. It's not supposed to be that way. Black and white. Black and white. It's, it's not that way. Mentorship is uh, like a natural, it must, must come into natural It'll way. It will be something into, into yeah. session, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's hard to have, hard, hard to have sessions. <laughs> and most of the time, the mentors doesn't say, oh, you need to do that, you need to do that. No, they just give uh, options, have advice, which is um, uh, what the thing that we need to do next. Okay. 
So um, on that part, uh, yeah, uh, that's the first thing. Mentor is very important. But at the same time, when uh, doing the commercialization or business in particular, everything is on you. It's on the, 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 the burden of the CEOs. Uh, people look, CEO is like rich people, but we never pay our services. So, uh, so uh, we, we pay our staff first. And, uh, as, and uh, doing, uh, for that, uh, the leadership part is uh, very important for us. Uh, so not relying on the mentorship, they are just advisor, but at the same time, the decision making is come from us. So um, uh, in that case, uh, when we try to navigate our uh, our business into a successful um, uh, product delivery to our customers, the only the one, the one and only important is the market fit, uh, which is how we want to fit our product or services into the market. Because without clients, the business is not going to run. Um, so this is totally different compared to what we have experienced as academia. So in academia, uh, we do the research first, finding the, uh, the value of what we are developing and the solutions that we, we can contribute to the academic society. But uh, things um, switch um, one, one, at, at, at 180 degrees, where we want to find the, how we want to deliver uh, what we have done in lab uh, to, the, to the benefits of the users. So this is some fine, uh, the, the process of fine tuning is very difficult, very challenging lah for us. Uh, but uh, the thing is we need to manage our, our difficulty lah on that. So that's the thing. First, mentorship is very important to get advice. Two uh, is the leadership uh, where you need to understand that you are the one that is responsible for the successful of the business. And the third and the, uh, the most important is you, want to, you need to find the market fit on your product or services uh, so that it can uh, benefit to the client or the users. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Uh, so what about you, Dr. Diana? Do you, do you have a mentor when you start your campus? Definitely, yes. Okay. Uh, I agree with Dr. Ah. Besides, so you need to have a mentor. As Dr. Ah mentioned before, mentor it doesn't need that. You need the appointment later uh, to appoint that person to become your mentor. But actually, uh, you need to have a variety of mentor in terms of research, mm. uh, in terms of giving your advice, to yeah. give you motivation also can be your yeah, mentor. Yeah. And then definitely you need to have a circle. Mm. Uh, different circle, uh, different uh, different roles. Uh, what I mean is circle in academicians is different. Yes, yes, yes. They have a, a different angle or different perspective. But you, at the same time, you need to have a circle in uh, entrepreneur because they have a mindset entrepreneur. So they will teach you, they will um, assist you in the right way. Okay, that's uh, number two. And then you need to know real, really know about your products. Mm -hmm. Even though you are not expertise, but you need to know about your product, then you can synergy. This is the synergy come in. You need to synergize, you need to collaborate with the experts, uh, uh, find the, uh, the manpower, uh, so that uh, it can be holistic to team up and to make sure that project success. So you need to know about the business model, of course, because again, as mentioned by Dr. R, uh, you are the one to make sure that the, the, the company success, you need to pay people, even though we are not having the pay yet, uh, but to make sure uh, the project is sustained and the company is sustained. So I think mentorship is very important, but how you find your mentor, I find the right mentor and the right circle to help you. So I, what I can conclude is networking is the key, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. Because, because to, to have, like, like Dr. Ah mentioned, 20 mentors. So <laughs> it's not that easy, but yeah. because of networking, it makes it uh, easier, right? And so, right, of yes. course, through the circle that Dr. Diana mentioned, right? Okay, so we know that uh, now you are venturing into your business. So does that make you focus less? On your research, publication, you know, there are the okay. seven pieces that are the okay. seven pieces that we need to very we need to question. Very yeah. question. <laughs> so any uh, any comments or advice? Uh, it's not tricky. It's killer question. <laughs> <laughs> killer question. Okay, okay. Alhamdulillah, uh, given that question, so I really love to. Okay, um, okay. Uh, when before I ventured into business, uh, my performance, I can say that um, I can achieve uh, papers, API, journals, whatsoever, and also students. Uh, so still meet the KPIs, okay. you know that. and uh, there's some. The, but for me, before I'm venturing the business, I'm not fulfilling my KPIs. This is one of the KPIs, which is commercializations. 
So as mentioned by Dr. Dr. Pairus, seven P's, one of them adalah uh, consultations and commercializations. So that means uh, we not meet the KPIs before I do the business. But when I do the business, I, I guess the business complete me. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's made my KPIs, my seven P's uh, complete uh, compared to the last time. So uh, taking your questions, is it uh, make me less publication whatsoever? Okay, I believe that I can share here the first time I meet our Dato Vice Chancellor, uh, which is uh, Dato uh, Faudi. Uh, one thing that he informed me during that time, personally, he said that uh, you need to build up your support. Okay? So your support means your students, uh, your systems, whatsoever. You need to operate that, make sure that your system, your support systems working during that time. So. Uh, before I do the business, I set up the system first. And then when I can see that the system can work up uh, by uh, automatically, uh, autonomously, autonomously. Uh, or, or, or I can see that less supervisions from my, my myself, then I can venture into the, uh, the other space. So one of the, my um, mentor, um, after after I venture into the business, uh, I asked Salim Udin from uh, Iskandar Investment. Mm -hmm. Uh, he mentioned that uh, Dr. Af, um, business need to be automated. Uh, you need to be, you need to see it as a system engineer. So it's like a body that uh, can work up to uh, by its own. Uh, that is the the most achievable, the the the, the highest achievable of um, leading the the business. And uh, doing that, I really honored to have that advice. And uh, turns out to be, uh, we already done the system develop the system, uh, the support system that we developed for the academia, and then I went into the business. So as, uh, answering the questions, a little less, you see, less uh, focusing. In fact, when I did, my, I'm doing my business now. I'm more focused on what I'm doing. Right now. The important is the support systems, as I mentioned by the mentors that I prefer. Thank you. So the same question to Dr. Daira. Does that make you less published or perhaps you know the very killer question? Yeah. All right, okay. So I can say that business can be an excuse uh, for you to focus less in uh, research and publication. So because in my case, I have three roles as academician, as administrator, deputy director of alumni, yeah. and also as a CEO. So I think um teaching uh, as academician is my passion. So uh, I need to focus more. So actually, for three roles, this one you need to learn how to manage your time. Yeah, yeah. You need to okay. learn, learn how to manage your time, and then uh, being academician is different things. Become the entrepreneur is different things. So as academician, I really love to teach. I really love to teach. I really love to meet my students and do a community service, uh, community activity with my student. And in business, uh, this is a great tool for you to expand your network, to share uh, your passion, your hobby, and so forth. And I think uh, the key point that you need to learn how to manage your time, and you need to synergy again. You need to work together. You cannot be become one man show. Okay? Because uh, let, uh, for example, I and Dr. Ah, we need to collaborate to make a uh, publication, mm -hmm. research, and so forth. Very interesting. So managing your time is the most yeah. important thing. Even even if you don't have a business, still you still right as yeah. an yeah. academia. So another last question for Dr. Diana. So what is your opinion on branding instead of marketing and customer driven versus experts driven? Okay. Uh, back to Dr. Pyrus' uh, question. It depends on the nature of business. Okay. okay. In my case, because my business model is uh, business to end user business to customer, B2C. So for my services of my uh, nature of business, we need to focus uh, it come equally, it come equally actually branding and marketing. What we need to uh, build our branding first because branding show to your customer uh, that uh, you have a strong brand. That's mean you have a strong services because the brand will uh, build your testimony to gain the trust uh, from your uh, customer. So when you do the marketing, you need the tool to to, to to promote your product to the customer or the to potential customer. But uh, when customer want to um, enroll with you, they need the brand. So for us, uh, it depends on the, maybe uh, for Dr. Af, it's different uh, perspective or angle because uh, Dr. Af focus more business to business. So different approach, uh, so based on the nature of business. For me, 
branding and marketing uh, go equally, but we focus more on branding. So I have a question, uh, which is not here. Okay. Say, so, um, people are not when we are we are uh, using our social media, right? Mm -hmm. So people is always talking about copywriting, copywriting, copywriting. Oh, okay, so, right. so, uh, so just, just, just a, this is a, a right. So my question is, uh, how do you do? You have a team in doing your copywriting, or you do it yourself, or you have a social media team? Up now you have a team. So how can any of any of you can answer me? So in okay, in my case, we do have a team. So I have a team in graphic designer. Uh, we do have a market, uh, marketing and branding sales. So they will advise uh, what to do and how the copywriting looks like. So they will uh, assist me in developing my branding as a personal branding and also for the company branding. Sometimes when you look at my Facebook, uh, something puts everything. So that's for my team. Okay. okay. So sometimes we need to have a team. And also sometimes you have need your your own personal personal yeah yeah, yeah. I, I understand that <laughs> that, that uh, yeah yeah that is um sometimes I go through social media so but uh, some business people would sometimes uh, put some uh, certain you know what 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 to post about the family yeah, sharing yeah, sharing family. about family right it's not every every single time you are going to post about your business yeah. right yeah. Yeah. right okay so it seems that ah okay so another one question for the top so what is what do you think one quality i think we have we have so many qualities yeah. but one quality that we must have to as a person to commercialize our research okay right this is a very beautiful questions and i was given by only one quality because there's a lot of quality <laughs> but, uh, it's okay uh, um <laughs> for one qualities that are really important in uh, commercializing or doing business uh, it's coming to one word, which is resilience. Resilience. Uh, so it's like uh, we winding on the um, uh, roller coasters. When we hiking up, it makes us excited. Okay. Uh, but when we falling down, it becomes we are become anxiety. Uh, we are receive that, that anxiety. So when we hiking, that's mean the successful is in uh, is in front of us. So we are fully excited in that time. But when we fail on some things, we are falling something that make us uh uh make us feel some anxiety on that but uh, at the end of the at the end of the journeys we are feel relief when the roller coaster is stopping so something like that okay so on part of this resilience how fast that you can uh pick your as your uh, yourself up after you falling down uh or, or you feel demotivated or you feel that um you are having this uh challenging on doing the doing, doing the process but um, the thing is, the resilience helps us to pick our as our our ourselves up, and um, uh, I guess uh, that is the the most important uh, attributes or quality that you must have uh, to all of those who want to venture into business. And uh, one thing that I learned from social media that I I follow from one of these motivators is that uh, business. Uh, the, the, uh, this guy is. Uh, already a millionaire, already a success in the business. And then there's uh, someone who asked him, uh, why are you still doing business? Whether you, uh, where, where you already have become a successful business, uh, millionaire, whatsoever. And then he said that, uh, I, because I enjoy the process. So, uh, so in the in terms of resilience, uh, the, uh, the motivation that you can pick up is you need to enjoy your process. Uh, so you enjoy uh, falling down, you enjoy hiking to the success, and you enjoy when you believing or doing the end of the journeys. Okay, so I would like to ask uh, the participants, is there any question from the participants so far? Any questions? Yeah, you can just unmute yourself and ask the question to the panel. Assalamualaikum. Assalam. Uh, uh, may I know who is uh, talking? I'm uh, Dr. Nick Ni Ahmad Izzam. Uh. Dr. Nick, okay, Dr. Nick uh, from Bayou. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, uh, to the panel. Actually, I put the question in the Facebook. Uh, Facebook oh, okay. Facebook. And the comment on Facebook. But it's okay, I will read this. Okay, we're talking about the uh, success in commercialization. So, what kind of success actually? Is it uh, getting funding or output from the project? So, what kind of success is it? Uh, can deliver the output or first we get the funding so which uh, success actually okay uh, so that's my my, my question okay 
Thank you, Dr. Nick, for the question. Okay, for my case or for Iman's questions, the, the, the measurement of the successful informational license product, definitely because my, my product is more to the community, definitely how my uh, product or my research uh, reach to the target uh, customer or target person, then how, how, how many people can get the beneficial from the product itself. So not only in terms of definitely in the, the monetary is the profit revenue is one of the method we measure the commercialization. But in my case, I I re, uh, I uh, measure my success with how many people can benefit uh, with my uh, research product. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Dr. Nizam. Nick Nizam on that questions. Um, uh, when we call about uh, the metric of success, yes. okay, what's the metric of the uh, measuring the success? For me, in my case, it's happiness. Okay, <laughs> simple. Uh, as long as we can deliver it successful to our client and the client happy, make us uh, happier. Okay, so so that's the only uh, measure that we look into uh, the the happiness on delivering our project successfully. Thank you, Dr. Nick, for the question. Any other questions from the participants? From the viewers? Okay, so there is two other questions. Maybe I can proceed. Uh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, eventually we have five. If we have go to the conclusion part. Okay, so uh, what is your final advice uh, or inspiration for to empower research and, and for us to commercialize the research? Okay, right. How? Uh, How? Yeah, my, yeah. My, final my, advice, yeah. Final advice then, go up to the lab. <laughs> Make your, yourself out of the lab. Meet people. Uh, for me, I'm doing business to business, B2B business. So I travel a lot. I meet our potential customers a lot. Um, uh, not only think about your research, but also think about how you want to put your research into the benefits to others. So, um, I really want to highlight what is our uh, core value of UTMs, ICs, eh? integrity, uh, sustainability, excellence, and uh, synergies. Turns out to be, I guess Dr. Diana also may agree with me, uh, when we're doing business, we have Inshallah, we are able to fulfill that. We are being challenged by the integrities, uh, whether this is uh, right or not. It's a like, thin line that between us that we can step out or step, step uh, don't, don't, don't uh, cross over. And on part of uh, the sustainability, how we want to think about the sustainability of our business and how we want to think about the sustainability of our academic uh, life universities. And also for the uh, synergy that Dr. Diana mentions. Uh, we can able to synergize ourselves together with the uh, other spin off and other company which is comes with our networking and collaborations and from there we can bring a lot of great things together and the uh, part of excellence i cannot say that we are achieving excellence right now but uh, we towards that so i mean uh, this uh, in other words uh, by doing business our goal is clear on that part so taking your talking your questions again um uh, yeah um delivering to our our research from the lab to the market uh is the the, the is the advice lah. so uh, just come along communications you have luminanas one of my mental mentions uh you need to have this um elements this factor which uh, uh the relationship with the humans can uh benefit most of us in the, eventually so i guess uh, that's all for me Okay, thank you. I think Dr. I already covered everything uh, for this uh, forum. And my advice is more, more, uh, more or less in the technical because if you want plan, if you plan to embark in the commercialization journey, you need to be ready, and then uh, you need to plan um, at the very beginning because um, when doing research, you need to have a um, goal uh, so that when the research is complete. You have a uh, you, you can uh, you can commercialize the project you can uh, commercialize the research because uh, when we do the research you need to have a goal so why uh, on how your research can uh, benefit uh, to others 
can be beneficial to others. All right, and then um, you need to uh, know and definitely uh, you need to ready in terms of mental and physical. And then again, you need to have a support system. You you need to uh, have your own motivation. You need to motivate yourself because some people, uh, they can be a friend to you, but maybe they cannot be a support system. So you need to be a brave person and have faith with yourself. That's all for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe uh, uh, both of panels can I'm um, giving this uh, giving this opportunity to, to promote your oh, your okay. business. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, thank you the panelists for that opportunity. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, not yeah. so many people are aware, but so we can we can have this uh, uh, session for to promote your business. Sure, sure. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. I really um uh, I can say that uh that really, really uh, beyond my expectations <laughs> lah. Okay. So okay, uh, okay. Uh, as mentioned earlier, our business is on the B two B, business to business. So our client is more on the those who are doing business as well. So when talking about business, there will be academia also a business. So you need to have some uh, some something that uh, you need to develop or system or application that you want to develop and want to And those who form industries, we open up our offer to you. Um, uh, we, uh, we are able to uh, come up with this uh, AI and machine learning or uh, cloud uh, technology and mobile apps applications for you with a better price because we are from locals, our talents are locals and Alhamdulillah, um, uh, this is how we can uh, give you some values uh, for your company on particular on improving your productivities on uh, doing your operations. Because uh, we're able to predict your your workforce, your your quality of performance or your productivities uh, through data. So basically, we are data scientists. To get more discount, hashtag ETN. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Future planning. <laughs> what, what, what else after this? Future planning. Eh? Uh, of course, we are planning to grow. Uh, I mean, uh, we want to look into some uh, growing our company into big, uh, into uh, more productive, uh, more profitable. Uh, because just last night I found the videos uh, profitable versus growth is not the same. Uh, the growth will make you pay more uh, expenses. There's an expenses you're working. Okay. So from the island, and I'm quite shocked with that time. Yeah, no wonder lah, you tell me. So uh, because we value our talents, uh, we hire as much as we as many as we can. And uh, we are focusing on growing our business. Uh, and but on the top of that, uh, the value that we want to deliver is uh, we want to highlighting the, the capability of our talents that are able to deliver in the uh, this uh, extraordinary technologies, which is AI, cloud, and mobile applications. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So you can follow Synapse Solutions, Synapse Innovations. Synapse Innovations. Synapse Innovations. Uh, Sorry. Okay. So what about Dr. Diana? Okay, thank you Dr. Afairus for the opportunity to promote our services for those who are looking for special need uh, services such as such, such as uh, occupational therapy, speech therapy, early intervention program, uh, enrichment program and some products for special need children. You may come to our center or follow our Facebook uh, website My Care Center. Uh, our centre located at Taman Mutiara Mas, not too far from the Taman Mutiara Ini and uh, UTM. So come and we are giving free consultation uh, for you. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, it's, uh, let's just say that we have come to our end of our forum session, but uh, I think we can always uh, contact each other. Yes, right? Yeah, right? If you have any questions, you can always directly to Dr. Arf or Dr. Diana. So thank you so much, uh, everyone who been watching us through Facebook and also Cisco Webex. Uh, so with that, uh, I hope that with all this uh, input from our panels, that we can actually get, gain something, motivate you, right? If you wanted, if you've been you've been thinking, or maybe I have this one product that, that I've been thinking wanted to commercialize, and then maybe hopefully by by with this uh, talk and forum, you can actually. So thank you so much, Dr. Arf and Dr. Dayak, once again for uh, together with us this morning. So, uh, sekian wa bilahi taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much.